Hello everyone, I'm Özgeut. I'm going to make a brief presentation of my master thesis that I developed in collaboration with uh, IMM Design Lab. The title of my thesis is Urban Morphology and Environmental Performance, a master plan of furnace disused railways in Milan via IMM methodology. First of all, I would like to explain the structure of my presentation. I will start with a short introduction of the area. Then I will briefly mention the general approach of my thesis. After, I will present all the work phase by phase. Regarding the territorial framework, the case is located in north of Milan. And here, it's better to underline that I've used the methodology, which is uh, multi-scale. I have three main scales. The local scale is the abundant railways in Farini. The intermediate scale is the extension of this local scale with respect to the main roads and the local morphology. And the macro scale is the entire uh, city of Milan. Now you see some photos from inside to describe the local context. As you see, there is an invasion of spontaneous vegetation and a lack of maintenance. In these images, the surrounding composition is visible. Um, the first line of uh, photos shows that uh, the north boundary, whereas other photos are taken from Gisolfa Bridge, which is located at the northwest of Farini. In the chapter two, I briefly tell the general approach, which is based on complexity. Complexity studies systems and a complex system is comprised by many other systems. Complex adaptive system is a specific type which components learn from past and uh, the components are able to adapt themselves. The human body is a perfect example of this kind of system because it involves other systems like our brain and all of our cells. Uh, so basically, in my thesis, I use the methodology which evaluates the city as a complex adaptive system. I used integrated modification methodology that I am going to call uh, IMM during the rest of my presentation. To introduce IMM briefly, um, it's an innovative multi-layer, multi-scale and holistic approach. It lets to use not only qualitative, but also quantitative methods to measure environmental performances, which I believe uh, quite objective. So in IMM, city acts as a complex adaptive system and it has subsystems. These subsystems are volumes, voids, links, and types of uses. IMM uh, consists of four different phases. First one is investigation or in other words, diagnostic phase. As a start, I analyzed each of the subsystems. Volume includes all kinds of built mass and gives the general idea of the morphology. In the local area, there's a big volume, which is the abandoned storage building. Void refers to all the streets, gardens, courtyards, and so on. Local area is kind of a huge void uh, in the current situation. The next uh, subsystem is links or transportation. In the case, all possible public transportation in Milan are existing, train, metro, bus, trolley bus, and tram. The last one is the functions, uh, types of uses. Here, I want to say that not only the most the function of the building is considered, but also the different functions at the ground floor level are important. After this uh, horizontal investigation, I move with the vertical one. Here, I analyze the key categories. So what is the key category? Um, key categories come from an emergence process of synergetic integration between these four subsystems that I just present. 
first one is porosity. Main subsystems are volume and void, but when I say volume and void, it doesn't mean I neglected the other two. It's an order of emergence for all the key categories. Another key category is the effectiveness. It shows the balance between volumes in cells and how these cells are covered by the catchment areas from uh, public transportation hubs. I choose the grid by considering the existing morphology and regarding the catchment areas, it means the comfortable walking distance and uh, it's defined by transit-oriented development. For train and metro, it is 800 meters and for bus and tram, it's 400 meters. So uh, what is the meaning of this map? What we understand from it? The local area is sort of blue, as you see, which means it is quite covered by public transportation, but not built. So this part uh, of the area has potential to be built. On the other hand, the warmer colors, uh, the red colors means these parts are already working efficiently, are already covered with catchment areas and already built too much in comparison with the other cells. The next key category is interface, which shows how the links are in how the links in the street network are integrated. It is the movability inside the urban morphological cavities, both for motorized and pedestrians. For the interface, it's better to apply this analysis also for the city, which is the macro scale. Because Farini is a network which belongs to a bigger network, as I mentioned before. Um, it belongs to a bigger system, and in this case, this bigger system is uh, the entire Milan. Another key category is permeability. It helps to understand how the system permits or restricts the flow of uh, users, pedestrian and motorized. The area has quite organic order in terms of uh, links. So what I try is uh, to understand the existing structure by dividing the area morphologically. In addition, the directness shows that how simple, simple to pass the area directly. In this case, the existing uh, railway yard acts as an obstacle in the area. Accessibility is useful uh, to see the uneven distribution of transportation modes and which parts are not easy to access. Here I applied uh, pedestrian isochrones based on the street network, which depends on a uh, different time hierarchically. This slide, are, uh, this slide is dedicated to the people which are the most important uh, users of the built environment. Uh, this map shows the number of residents, employees, and both of them together, uh, respectively. Here, the data source is uh, ISTAT. Betweenness is another metric in accessibility. Um, in a nutshell, it shows the fraction of the shortest paths between pairs of nodes in the network that pass by uh, buildings. Diversity is mainly related with functions. Uh, here we have three different classes, necessary, regular, occasional, and optional. This classification is based on uh, Jan Gale's classification. Here is the heat map for diversity. It shows us the distribution of the functions. And since it's also overlapped with the pedestrian isochrons, for five minutes, we can easily see which uh, functions are not well accessible by foot. The last key category is proximity. Proximity shows the distribution of key functions and how the area is covered. 
the comfortable distance to these functions in 400 meters, which is five minutes by foot. And the key functions are like hospitals and educational, this kind of functions are uh, included. As I already mentioned, there is also a quantitative part. So in this slide, I summarize numerical representation of key categories by uh, radar graphics. So in each key category, we have six different metrics to understand the existing structure. After all this horizontal and vertical investigation, uh, we have the performance indicators. So I choose 57 indicators for my project. Uh, this, these indicators helps to measure the actual environmental performance of the system. For example, length of biking roads, number of people that live within walking distance from public transportation, and um, access to community gardens, and so on. Um, in addition, I will recalculate them at the last phase in order to eval uh, evaluate and compare like sort of a before and after situation. Second phase is the formulation based on the choice of catalyst. Catalyst is the weakest part in terms of performance in the system. I choose links from subsystems and permeability amongst the key categories. But other layers, uh, which are not my catalyst, will be affected from any change in catalyst. They will act like a like reactants in a chain reaction. And this is the main concept of uh, the system. Next phase is modification or transformation, in other words. I considered the design order pr uh, principles, the DOPs, simultaneously. They are a network of targets and all of them are integrated with each other. Each of them are also correlated with sustainable development goals by United Nations Agenda 2030. Here for this uh, presentation, I selected the most important ones to present. The first DOP is uh, connected open space system, activate urban met uh, metabolism. From city scale, Milan is surrounded kind of a green circle. When we zoom in uh, into the intermediate scale, th there are many green areas which are not well connected, but I try to define some green corridors to, uh, to make this connection possible. At the local scale, I propose two green bridges to make that green composition possible that I mentioned in the previous slide. In addition to these two bridges, I propose five different green classes, which are public green area, community gardens, close to the residential blocks, botanic garden, buffer zone with the rails. And lastly, I consider the existing railway yard as the railway ecosystem because it's a part of urban ecological corridors that flank the infra infrastructure. These are the existing plant species in the area. And this is my proposal for all the five different green classes specifically. Mainly my concerns are enhanced biodiversity, clean water and soil, attract animals, create color spa space, and so on. When I use the word of biodiversity, I don't refer only the plants. I also refer to the animals like insects, fishes, mammals, and some types of birds. Regarding insects, I would like to emphasize bees since they are very important for the environment. I checked out the existing project of Bee Highway in uh, Milan, and I propose to extend this uh, route by my proposal. 
until the my local area until the farim. The next DOP is promote walkability, cycling, and their integration with public transport, which is one of my biggest concerns to improve during my, uh, my thesis pro uh, pro process. I propose new paths to make the area connected also with the surrounding, both for pedestrians and cyclers. In respect of uh, cyclability, the existing network is not well connected, but it has potential. So with BTB concept, it would be helpful to achieve this goal in this scale. The aim of this concept is to encourage people to use bike instead of bus, especially for the intermediate area. I propose uh, this concept from home to train station. In addition, from this train, the same train station to school or work, it depends on uh, where people commute. Next one is balancing the public transportation potential. I propose the, to extend the existing bus route following the north boundary of the area. These graphs are to show the distribution of functions. I propose 30% non-residential and 70% residential functions. Approximately 20% of the residential are uh, dedicated to social housing. About the water management, I mainly propose to drainage the excess stormwater by natural based solutions. First one is the green alleys for the parameters of growth to make it permeable. Another proposal is rain gardens, especially close to the buildings. Lastly, retention ponds to store water with the help of native vegetation in the wet zone. Fostering local energy production, building as a component of of a community energy system. To benefit from sun as much as possible, I search for the best height and the best shape of the buildings. And uh, among the alternatives, I choose the third option. I run the sun exposition analyze to cross-check. City in a food producer. Where I have residential blocks, where I propose uh, the residential blocks, I propose to have community gardens, which will be managed by inhabitants who lives there in the courtyards, and an open market place to let them sell their products to the uh, other residents of the city. With all the help of previous process, I developed the master plan. Then I moved to the last phase, which is the retrofit. Here, in a nutshell, I redone uh, what I've done in the first phase and evaluate the performance of the new system to see if it's better now and if it matches with my expectations. So here, uh, I fastly show the before and after maps as a sequence voids and types of uses, porosity, effectiveness, interface, accessibility, diversity, proximity, and recalculation of performance indicators as well. After this last phase, I realized that uh, there are some parts which are underperformed, and I updated the master plan with some local interventions. So this is uh, master plan the second, which is the final master plan. Uh, let me briefly uh, present it. I propose three bridges. This one, which is the car-shaped one, uh, serves also to cars, while the other two is only for bike and pedestrian. For the other direction, I propose uh, one wide promenade, the main promenade in the project and all the other secondary paths uh, which can directly connect with this main promenade. At this point, I propose one bus stop uh, because of the concerns regarding accessibility. This part is the biggest change after the first retrofit. And here, uh, I try to create sort of a welcome square 
that is directly connected to the main promenade. And this, this is the tallest building in the area, which can be uh, like a landmark of the new Farini, of the new system. To remind the functional program, I keep the footprint of the existing huge building and assign cultural functions. These two volumes are a mixture of offices and commercial. These four blocks with the big courtyards inside are the residential with community gardens and the L-shaped volumes are the social housing. Besides, these little uh, pavilions are flexible and they are functioned like bike sharing, exhibitions and marketplaces. And the blue system, this one, the blue system interacts with open green system, passes through the area. On the ground floor level, I propose more openings in the buildings to make the open spaces uh, better connected. And at this level, functions are quite several, like bakeries, bars, restaurants, shops at the ground floor, especially on the welcoming square to make this area more alive. The schematic sections to illustrate how blue green system are uh, related with the built environment, the longitudinal section. Then I retrofit the system again. I just present, uh, here I just present the parts caused to update the master plan. Now the system is, the system is performing better in terms of diversity and accessibility, especially if you pay attention to maps of diversity, you see that the welcome square is became sort of a center in the intermediate scale tremendously because I try to organize the functions better in the second master plan. Recheck the indicators for the second time and see the performances. What you see in bold uh, among the rows are the more improved indicators. Here is a general overview of the new system that I propose, the new master plan in the surrounding context. This was the tallest building, which can be a landmark of the area. Well, that's all about my presentation. I would like to finish my words with a quotation by Louis Mumford. The artist doesn't illustrate science, but he frequently responds to the same interest that a scientist does and expresses by a visual synthesis what the scientist converts into analytical formula or experimental demonstration. Thank you very much for your attention.